Hi guys, welcome to VO Tech Guru, audio technology simplified. Today we're going to show you how to make acoustic panels similar to the ones you see here in our control room. These panels will help get your room sounding a little less like this and a little more like this. Instead of going through the tools and materials list one by one, I put the list below this video for your convenience. So just copy, paste, and print, and that should make things a bit easier for you when you go shopping. But nothing you'll see here should be too complicated for the average viewer. And everything was purchased from our local Home Depot, aside from the felt, which we got from Joanne Fabric. And finally, as of this video, the material cost came in around $25 per panel. So they're pretty affordable. All right, let's get to the build. First up is building the frame. When we built our frames, we used 4 by 8 sheets of 3 quarter MDF. And one sheet should get you enough framing pieces to build somewhere around 8 to 9 panels. To save us time and extra work, we had Home Depot cut the 3 inch wide by 8 foot long sections for us on their panel saw. The outside dimensions for this panel will be approximately 16 and a half inches wide by 48 and a half inches long and 3 inches deep because a single piece of the 16 inch Roxel insulation we're using fits inside those dimensions perfectly. But if you'd like to make wider panels, you can order 24 inch wide Roxel and have it delivered to your local Home Depot. Just make sure you adjust the other material dimensions accordingly. By the way, take note that the entire side of the panel may be 48 and a half inches long, but the side piece itself is only 47 inches long, and the top and bottom make up the one and a half inch difference. So just make sure you keep that in mind before you cut anything. Okay, so the frame itself consists of two sides, a top and a bottom, along with two supports that will help stiffen the frame. First, you'll start with the top piece and mark three eighths of an inch from the edge. Then take a framing square and draw a line at that mark. Now mark three quarters of an inch across that line on both sides. Those will be your drilling points. To drill our holes, we're using a countersink bit, which has a sharp tip and allows for accuracy when drilling. Now drill at both three quarter inch marks. Notice that the countersink portion of the bit routes out the wood, making room for the screw heads. Pre-drilling will also help keep the wood from splitting when we assemble the frame. Now just repeat this process for the other side of the top and bottom pieces. And a quick tip for you. Fasten a piece of squared up scrap to your worktop and it'll make the joints a bit easier to manage when you're aligning them. Now line up the top and side and pre-drill to ensure the wood doesn't split when you insert the screws. Take your glue and spread it where the top and side will meet. Now bring the pieces together so they're square and flush. Then install your screws to fasten the top to the side. Now repeat the process at the other three joints where the tops meet the sides. Now that you have the tops and sides assembled, it's time to install the supports. Starting at either end, measure the inside of the frame. In our case, that came out to 15 inches, so we'll cut our supports to that size. After you cut the supports, find and mark the center at both ends. Now put your support in position, making sure the pieces are flush at the top and side, and transfer the mark to the side piece. Now measure down the side piece near this mark at 3 eighths of an inch. Then drill on this mark, as we did with the tops. Now put your support back in position, and drill into the side of the support to create a pilot hole for the screw. And simply repeat the process for the other side of the support. Now it's time to measure and mark your holes for securing the tops or bottoms into the supports. Measure and mark four inches in from either side of the support. As we did before with the sides, transfer the marks to the other side and prep for drilling. Measure down three eighths of an inch at these marks and follow the drilling sequence as before. Now glue up the support on one side, then the top, then the other side. Get your support in place, making sure it's flush with all surfaces, and fasten it to the frame. Now just repeat on the other side of the frame, and it should look something like this. Now it's time to install fiberglass screen on the back of the panel. Make sure you leave enough overage on all sides of the screen so it's easy to grab and manage during the install. To begin, align the screen on one side and staple it into the frame. Now do the same on the other side, but this time, Make sure you keep tension on the screen to remove any wrinkles as you move along. Now move on to the top and bottom. If you end up with any staples that sit proud of the surface, just tap those down flush with the frame. Next, use a sharp blade to cut the excess screen flush with the edge of the frame. Wearing gloves, long sleeves, and a dust mask, cut away a bit of the backside of the insulation to make room for the support pieces at the top and bottom of our panel. To make the first cut using a long razor knife, take a piece of 3 inch wide scrap wood and use that as a guide, making a 3 quarter inch deep cut into the back of the insulation. Now make another cut into the insulation in this direction, 
again, around three quarters of an inch down, all the way back to the cut you made earlier. Then remove the excess insulation. Then move on to the other side of the insulation and do the same. Now it's time to turn the insulation over and fit it into the frame. And when you're done with that step, make sure the frame is free of any leftover debris. Next, we're going to install screen on the front of the panel to ensure we have a firm and smooth surface when we install the fabric. For the front of the panel, you'll just follow the same procedure as the back of the panel. For the next step, cut your fabric 12 inches longer than the height and width of the panel. Now center your panel on the fabric. Now you're ready to spray on the adhesive. Hold the can around 8 to 10 inches away from the sides and apply evenly and thoroughly across the surface. In our case, a couple of passes did the trick. Next, spray the fabric, ensuring that you're covering any area that will touch the panel. While the first side is setting up, spray the opposite side. After the adhesive sets up for about two and a half minutes, adhere it to the panel. And as you move along, make sure you smooth out the edges. And when you're done adhering the fabric, be sure to give it a pass or two with your hand to make sure it's fully bonded to the frame. After the other side is set up for about two and a half minutes, get that side installed. Only this time, you'll need to pull the fabric away from the side of the panel as you go to make sure you're removing any potential wrinkles that might be on the front of the panel. And as you see here, the fabric on our panel has been pulled tight, so we have a nice smooth surface without any wrinkles. Now it's time to cut away some fabric, but just enough to make room for the fabric at the top and bottom of the panel. To do this, use a sharp blade, and while applying downward force on the panel, gently and slowly cut away the excess fabric at the corner where the tops meet the sides. Now spray the ends, as you did with the sides. After waiting for the adhesive to set up, install the fabric on both ends, using the pulling method to help tighten up the front of the panel. While the ends are bonding, cut away the fabric from the sides. It's a good idea to keep the fabric flat and tight as you cut, and this 12-inch drywall knife worked great for us. We found that two light passes with a sharp blade gave us the cleanest edge. Now cut the other side using the same method. And now you can move on to the top and bottom. Next up is creating the hanging brackets. We found that this carpet transition metal works great. It has a low profile and is easy to cut and fasten. Measure the space between the first two holes, which is 6 inches in this case, and then mark the center. Then measure and mark 12 inches up from there. First, cut off the end of the strip at the first mark with a hacksaw. Then, make another cut at your second mark. After cutting the brackets, you'll have metal burrs and sharp edges, so you'll want to sand those down. We used 80 grit sandpaper, sanding the tops, sides, bottom, and face of the cut end, which left us with a smooth and safe surface. Now it's time to mount the brackets, so we're going to measure across the width of the panel to find center. In this case, it's 8 and 1 quarter inches, so we'll place a mark right there. Then we'll take one of the bracket pieces and find center, which is 6 inches, and place a mark there. Then line up the two center marks with the edge of the bracket lining up perfectly with the top of the support. With the bracket in position, mark the holes on the back of the panel. Using a drill bit with a smaller diameter than your screws, create your pilot holes. Place the bracket over the support, recenter, and fasten the bracket to the back of the support. Next, take the wall bracket and place it under the panel bracket as shown here. Then measure from the top of the panel to the bottom of the wall bracket. In our case, it's four and a half inches. Figure out the ideal mounting height for the top of your panel and place a mark on the wall at that point. From that point, measure down to the bottom of your wall bracket. And if you recall, it was four and a half inches in our case. Use a level to draw a line across the lower mark. Next, line up the bottom of the wall bracket with the line. Now, mark the position of the two bracket holes on the wall. Drill small pilot holes at these marks. This is one of the metal anchors we'll be drilling into the drywall using a standard Phillips tip. While keeping the drill level, screw in the anchors until the faces are flush with the drywall. Now we'll use these screws that came with the anchors to mount the wall bracket. Place the bracket on the wall and partially drive in the first screw. Do the same with the second screw. Double check to make sure the bracket is level on the mark, and then firmly fasten it to the wall. Now we'll use a self-adhesive bumper at the rear bottom of the panel to make sure it's equal distance away from the wall. And this particular bumper is just short of one half inch thick, and that's the same distance from the back of the panel to the back of the wall bracket, which is perfect in our case. Just remove the adhesive backing, stick the bumper to the back of the panel, and you should be good to go. 
Now center and hang the panel. Push down firmly, and you're done. All right, guys, we hope this video was helpful. And if it was, please think about subscribing to this channel. And if you know someone who might benefit from this tutorial, maybe pass it on. Have a great day.